What is the difference between a 16 by nine and two to one aspect ratio? Well, let me show you. And let me also warn you to be prepared to have your mind completely blown. So this is a standard 16 by nine aspect ratio. And this is a two to one aspect ratio. Is your mind completely blown? Probably not, but let me explain why I've started to use a two to one aspect ratio and also walk you through the steps on how to set it up for your projects using Final Cut Pro. When it comes to choosing an aspect ratio, it really is equal parts creative preference and platform performance. In terms of creative preference, a lot of it just might be what you think looks the best. And that's the reason why people put letterbox on their videos to make things look more cinematic. It's the same reason that when we were kids, my friends and I would put literally black electrical tape over the top and bottom of the lens on our cameras to try to mimic the widescreen format of the movies we were seeing in the theater at the time. And that wider frame, that wider aspect ratio really does change the way that you compose your shots. It's kind of the same thing as if you're just taking like a normal photo versus a square photo for social media, it changes the way that you compose things and frame everything. But in addition to just your creative preference, a lot of it also comes down to platform performance. So take YouTube, for example. YouTube handles two to one videos really, really well. If you watch them in the desktop viewer, it plays like natively without any bars at the top or bottom or sides or anything. And with YouTube, a huge percentage of viewership comes from mobile devices. And over the past few years, smartphones are all going towards a wider aspect ratio, which is much closer to two to one than it is to 16 by nine. For example, watching a 16 by nine video on this iPhone 10R looks totally fine, but if I wanna take advantage of this larger screen and fill the phone, then there is a chance stuff near the edge is going to get cut off. In this case, the top of my head is getting cut off a little bit more than I wanted to in the original video file. Whereas if I watch a video that is in a two to one aspect ratio, you'll notice that just right away it fills more of the frame. It goes right up to the iPhone's notch. And if I fill the phone even more, it does crop a little bit, but it's not nearly as much. And since I filmed this video knowing that it was gonna be in two to one, I set it up specifically so that it wouldn't crop in a negative way. And that is a much more immersive experience to see your work filling an entire display. And fortunately, editing your videos on a two to one timeline is really, really simple. I'm gonna walk you through how to do it using Final Cut Pro, but these steps are basically the same on Premiere or pretty much any editing software. The first thing you'll need to do is create a new project. And for the size, you'll wanna select custom and then enter in 3840 by 1920 and then whichever frame rate you're filming your video in. And as soon as you do that, you'll notice that your project window is a little bit wider and a little bit narrower than what you might be used to with 16 by nine. At this point, you can just import your footage the same way that you normally would for any project. But the first thing, as soon as you drag it to the timeline, you will see that now your project no longer fills the project window. You have these black bars on the sides. So to fix that, you just need to adjust your video size. I usually just scale mine to about 115% and that fills the entire frame. And then I just adjust the vertical position to have it framed the way that I want there. Look at that uh, super cool guy. Now you do need to do this cropping on every clip for your project and that can definitely be a bit tedious, but after a while it becomes a quick part of your workflow and hopefully it doesn't add too much extra time to your editing process. And because you're cropping in your footage, it is important to remember that when you're filming, your shot is going to get cropped a little bit, so you don't wanna put anything really important near the edges of your screen because it's probably going to get trimmed once you scale it and reposition it to the two to one aspect ratio. So basically just put a safe zone around the edge of your display and put all your important subject matter closer to the center of the frame. And how you crop is gonna depend on the resolution of your footage. I mainly film at 1080p with the EOS R and I don't know what kind of magic is in Final Cut or the technical reasons behind it, but scaling up that regular 1080 footage to this new 3800 timeline 
looks great. Like the videos look terrific. It doesn't seem like there's any loss of resolution or quality. Everything still looks really sharp, really clear, and really good. And if you are uploading your video to YouTube, it's important to remember that YouTube does run its own compression algorithm on your video once you've uploaded it. And again, I am not a software engineer, so I don't know any of the technical stuff behind this, but I do know that these timelines, when they're uploaded to YouTube and they're compressed, they still look really good. Everything just seems to be very compatible and the end result is a great looking video. From there in Final Cut, you just edit your video like normal. And when you go to export, you will notice down at the bottom of the export window, the resolution is now 3840 by 1920, but everything else is exactly the same. The only real negative I found so far in using the two to one aspect ratio is that sometimes, depending on where your video is viewed, there might be small black bars at the top and bottom. So for example, in portrait mode on the native YouTube app on the iPhone, you can see these little black bars right here. But of course, as soon as I turn the phone into landscape, those go away and I can fill the entire display. And the same thing is true when watching on an iPad on the YouTube app. You can see these bars at the top and bottom. They're not super noticeable, but they are there. And as soon as you do full screen, it fills it normal and it looks like a regular widescreen video, just a little bit wider than a traditional 16 by nine. Ultimately choosing to use a two to one aspect ratio is just a personal creative choice. And personally, I do think that it looks better. And as technology continues to develop and more and more people are consuming video on devices with wider displays, this is going to help your work look its best for the largest number of people and devices all over the place. And beyond all that, one of my favorite things with a technique like this is that it doesn't require you to buy or upgrade anything. It helps your work look better just by using what you already have in a slightly different way. And if you are interested in helping your work to look as good as it possibly can without having to spend any extra money, I did put together a short playlist of tutorials that I've made where you just use the stuff that you already have to make your work look even better.